Hello, thank you for joining me. Um, I wanted to share something that was really uh, encouraging to me. Uh, recently, I think uh, it was on a Thursday, we were praying over here at the shop for a group, and uh, um, God gave me this picture, and I was seeing like uh, um, in the throne room, and I was seeing that, that, and I was reminded of the scripture where it talks about we're hidden in Christ. I could see Jesus was literally like this, like this shield, and he was, he was covering us. And when the enemy was looking at us, he was just seeing Christ. And obviously, he doesn't want to have anything to do with Jesus because of the truth, you know, that Jesus has conquered the enemy. But I was seeing that uh, the enemy, um, he had like a tackle box, and it had all of these different fishing lures in it. And I could see that he was taking these fishing lures and he would like cast. And uh, it was all these different like baits. And I knew it represented like our thought life and it represented the things that we think about and the things that we, we have a tendency of like going into fear or going into something that's contrary to the spirit of truth, which is, like I said, Jesus has conquered the enemy and all of our promises in the Father and just uh, everything everything that you know is true and just uh the peace that surpasses understanding and in the bible it talks about the holy spirit is the spirit of truth and just all of the fruit of the holy spirit that's available to us you know as we're in that place of trusting jesus as our thoughts are revolving around the truth of what he's done and you know who he is and like i said before the promises and just uh, everything that we're longing and we're looking for as believers and as just people, you know, in general. And so, uh, and just, you know, that place of being just a witness to the Father's love and just experiencing the Father's love and the, just the goodness of God. And just that's what calms us and that's what soothes us and that's what humbles us that we become responders to his love by loving him back but that's a different message anyways so i was seeing like in that place of being hidden with christ the enemy was like he tempts us with thoughts of oh my gosh what are you going to do about this or what about this circumstance or what about that and then we we bite on that thought like a fish would bait and then we start going down that road and you know within moments we find ourselves out of that place of faith and in that place of fear or anxiety or worry or you know religious pride or just whatever it is and i was seeing and we've all experienced this you know multiple times multiple times a day even and god's ultimately he's refining our focus to where we're constantly in agreement with faith that jesus is worthy to be trusted and we're constantly in agreement with that and the, the authority and the power and the peace and just all the fruit of the Holy Spirit is resting on us, just the love of God, everything that's good as we're in agreement with the truth. And ultimately, you know, sin in and of itself isn't what the enemy is doing. It's our tendency to believe lies. So God's freeing us from our tendency as human beings to believe lies that we can be constantly in agreement with the truth. And it says in the word that truth is what sets us free. So when the enemy's lies stop working and we're just bearing witness to the truth, regardless of how it feels or regardless of our understanding or regardless of our human reasoning, we're choosing to stand in that place like, no, I'm choosing to trust Jesus. We become free. But you know, ultimately God's allowing areas in our lives, thoughts, and he's allowing those things, circumstances, situations to come up to shine his light on areas where we do need to grow in our faith. And our response does need to change from where we're biting that bait and we're going into that place of fear to where we're saying, no, I'm not going down that road anymore. I'm not going to put my faith in my ability to figure it out or not put my faith in you know, this person that I've been looking to or not put my faith in my finances. I'm going to put my faith in the provider, not the provision. And uh, ultimately, God's allowing circumstances and situations to highlight those areas so 
um, our faith can be refined to where like Christ, we're not quenching the, the spirit of truth and we're constantly walking in that place of being dead to ourselves and alive to God. And, you know, Jesus didn't entertain thoughts of his own well-being or his own welfare. He was dead to himself and alive to God. And the Holy Spirit's, you know, doing that same good work within us. But it comes at the price of us, you know, seeing circumstances and situations that we have gone into fear and we have said, okay, God, I need to look out for myself or I need to do this because I, I really can't trust you with that. I can trust you with these uh, other areas, but not with, with this area. And um, it's just really liberating knowing that God is working in those tough circumstances and those tough situations. And, you know, when we get lured out of that place of being hidden with Christ, where the enemy does find that one thing or the few things or whatever that we're, you know, coming off of the truth, off of that foundation of faith, then the Holy Spirit's so faithful to guide us back into that place of truth, of Jesus's faithfulness, his goodness, and then we're receiving of what's Jesus is once again, which is the peace, the truth, the victory, the Father's love, everything that we're, we're looking for that quiets us and calms us. And then we get to respond to the truth once again, just through worship and loving God back. And, uh, but it's so cool to know that that's what's happening in the supernatural realm and that there is a purpose behind the things that we go through and the things that we experience. And like one of the other messages that God's actually shaping us through our circumstances, refining our faith to become like gold. And I just thought that picture was so cool because it verbalized so well just uh, what's happening, you know, in us being tested or when we feel like we're being tempted. And sin in and of itself isn't the issue. It's that tendency for us to agree with the lies of the enemy when he's saying, oh, God's not worthy to be trusted in this area. You need to look out for yourself. And that's exactly the same old trick that he used with Adam and Eve, you know. And uh, so I wanted to share a couple of scriptures just because I think they're cool. Um, so in Psalms 91, one, this is the 91, one and two, this is the new living translation. It says those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. That's so cool. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. And it, it's just such a cool thought that not only is God like our only refuge, because in him, he, we were created to please him and we are created to be in that place of communion and relationship with God. And that's where we find peace. That's where we find wholeness in that, in that place. And so it makes sense like any good father, he's making a way for us to be in that place where we're satisfied and where we're um, just uh, in relationship with him. And then in uh, Colossians 3, 2, and 3, it says, Set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. And that's exactly what the enemy will do. He'll bring our attention back on to what's happening around us to promote fear and to promote us living for ourselves, living for the flesh, as opposed to being dead to ourselves and alive to living for God's glory and his pleasure, which we know that's impossible without faith, according to Hebrews. So it says, uh, for as far as this world is concerned, you have died, and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. So Jesus is the door, and we get to enter in through our faith in Christ to experience, you know, the Father. And in Colossians 2, 3, it says, In him are all the treasures, and it's talking about Jesus, in him all the treasures of divine wisdom, comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and lie hidden. And I just thought that was so cool because in Christ, as our thoughts are revolving around him, as our faith is in him as 
you know, the enemy's trying to bring up different things to promote anything other than faith in God to bring us out of agreement with the Holy Spirit. Um, we find the truth and we find these treasures that have been hidden and we find the mysteries of God and the mysteries of his vastness and his love for us and just his goodness as we just respond to those things by continuing to fall more and more in love with God. And so uh, one more. In 1 John 5, 4 and 5, this is the ESV, it says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. I'm going to read it one more time. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our victory that overcomes the world, you know, like resists the enemy by just acknowledging the truth. And sometimes we'll go into that place of trying to fight the enemy in our own strength and we just get exhausted. But we get to resist him by acknowledging the truth and allowing the Holy Spirit to fight through us or fight for us or just, you know, laying down our lives and we're, we're dead to ourselves living for God's glory and then living for the sake of the people that are around us as we're, you know, being led and motivated by the Holy Spirit. So it says, Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So, I hope that blessed you guys, and I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope that picture helps put things into perspective. And thanks for listening.